Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial about characters. I'm Renault and today we're going to see how to create your own character in the Corgi Engine. The first thing you need to understand is that in the Corgi Engine all characters uh, share the same classes whether they are AI controlled or player controlled, whether they are enemies, uh, whether they are 2D or 3D, uh, it's all the same classes. So for example, here I am in the lava demo scene and if I select um, this character, he's a blue robot. If I press play, you see that uh, um, it's, uh, it's an enemy and it's patrolling. And uh, we're going to see that uh, it does share all the same classes as a regular character. So um, what, what makes a character? I'm, I'm just going to drag a playable character in the scene. So let's take the uh, Space Corgi Sprite Sheet 1 and let's see what, what we have. So let's see what this character is made of. Uh, so if I select it, we'll see that it has a sprite renderer component because it's a sprite based component, sprite sheet based actually. So uh, that's also the reason why I have an animator here. You don't have to use sprites in your character. You can use 3D models, you can use spine, you can use whatever Unity supports. It's all good. Um, then we have a, Corgi, uh, a box collider 2D component. That's the green rectangle you see here. That's something that will be used to define the size of your character in the world. Um, that's how the collisions will be computed. Then we have a Corgi controller script. Um, this one is responsible for gravity uh, movement. It's like the engine behind it all. That's what will be used to add force to your character. That's what will handle all collisions. So that's where you can define, you know, uh, the collision masks, um, the details of the ray casting. Um, note that this is not a physics based engine. It's ray cast based. So um, you won't be able to like uh, have balls falling and uh, jumping over slopes and stuff like that. That's uh, what you would need usually a physics engine for. Uh, this is more for tight movement, uh, better platformer feel and it's reminiscent of things like Mario and um, Mega Man. Then we have the character script. Uh, the character script doesn't do much in itself. It's really a central class that will link all the other class uh, together. Um, it's, uh, it acts as a central point and that's where you will define uh, whether the player is uh, AI based or player controlled. If it's player controlled, you need a player ID. Um, and uh, that's where you can define, you know, it's basic direction stuff. You can uh, set whether or not it's uh, character model based, um, stuff like that, that we will uh, go into details in another tutor tutorial. Then we have a uh, health script over here where you say, okay, this character has uh, 100 health points. Uh, this is what happens when it dies, uh, when it takes damage and so on. And then we have a bunch of abilities and abilities like crouch, dash, dive, uh, climb a ladder, jetpack and so on. You can have um, as many abilities as you want. You can create your own abilities in the Corgi engine. Um, and really all characters in the engine are just um, these few scripts and abilities. For example, here I've got this uh, blue ro robot enemy. And as you can see, it has a character, it has a Corgi control script, health uh, somewhere here, and a few abilities like uh, horizontal movement, it can handle a weapon, and it can walk and shoot on sight. And that's basically all it does. Uh, as you can see, if I press play, and if I take my character here, the blue robot is moving and shooting on sight whenever I get into, it, into its sight. So how do I create a new character, you may ask. Um, there are many ways you can create a new uh, playable or AI based character in the Corgi engine. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll cover the three recommended ones. Um, if you prefer doing it differently, as long as it works for you, it's completely fine. So let's have a look at the um, automatic creation first. Uh, I'm just gonna move into another scene. I'm gonna take the minimal level and change my changes here so um 
the first thing I need is a basis for my character. So let's say I'm gonna take uh, a sprite. Um, I'm gonna take one that I already have. I'm gonna take a block, for example. Um, not this one. All right, this one. It's gonna be a really weird character, but anyway. Um, now that I have my object in my scene, I'm just gonna add a character component to it. So I just search for it, character. Here I am. I'm gonna say it's uh, player controlled. It's uh, player one. I won't change anything, and I'll just say auto build player character. So here I am. Uh, the script automatically uh, added a lot of components to it, and if I press play, you'll see that I can now control um, my character. I also have a rectangle character because that's how the scene is set up, but um, by default you see that I can control um, my slope character, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, of course I could have done the same thing with an AI character. Um, it's really, really the simplest way you can create a character in the Corky engine. All right, so another way to do it is uh, to copy an existing character. So um, let's say I just press play, I remove my slope character. So um, right now I have, if I, yep, there you go. As you can see, I have this rectangle character. It does a bunch of stuff. Um, it's really the, the most simple character you can have in, in the engine. Um, so let's say you like it really much. Um, one way to do um, a new character, starting from that, is to find uh, the prefab. So um, what I did right here is select the level manager. And uh, this tells me that uh, the character used in this scene is the rectangle character. I can select the prefab. And uh, so let's say I want to modify it because it's almost perfect, but I want to do some changes. Oh, I just um, duplicate it. Uh, it's control D on my, my PC. And I name it uh, my new rectangle. So uh, if I want to use it in the scene, I just select the level manager drag and drop the, my new rectangle into uh, this slot here. And I can then press play, nothing changes, but I'm using my new character. So uh, from there, what I can do is, for example, tweak some stuff. Uh, maybe I want it to move much faster. So I just uh, changed the speed to from six to 20. And now it's working at a much uh, high speed. I can also decide maybe that, uh, I don't know, uh, the jetpack force uh, will be twice as much. So if I press play, I'm now jetpacking super fast, or faster at least. And uh, I can say maybe you cannot run anymore, you cannot jump anymore. Uh, and well, I can still jetpack, but I cannot jump. Um, and that way uh, you can, you know, change the sprite renderer, you can change anything. Um, that's another way to create a character in the Corgi engine. All right, and of course, uh, there's the components approach, which will uh, have you build the character component by component, brick by brick. Um, the best way to do that is to create a new empty game object, name it um, my new uh, character. All right. Um, then you, you position that at uh, zero, zero, and here we are. Um, from there, what you need is uh, a sprite or whatever. Let's take uh, this block here, position it at zero, zero, and we want to nest it under the character. So uh, uh, we'll call this the model. The idea here is to separate um, the logic that will be at the top level from the model that will be uh, under it. Um, so from there, what I can do is add a box collider 2D. Um, I think it's exactly the right size, but uh, I just got lucky. So here you can adjust uh, your size and offset. 
Um, I've got my box collider to the I can add a Corgi controller. Uh, the only thing you need to change here is uh, the platform masks. Um, and the collision masks in, in general. Um, ideally, you'd want to change them all. So moving platform mask would be moving platforms and so on and so on. Um, but uh, for the sake of the example, we won't go into this kind of details. Um, then I'm gonna need a character script. Um, I'm gonna say it's player based. Here I, I'm gonna write player one. That's the binding key that will tell our input manager. Uh, which character it is. Um, oh, I forgot to set uh, the layer and tag to player. So yeah, I'm gonna just say change children, uh, doesn't matter. And uh, I've got a character script. I'm gonna need something to make it move. Uh, so I need a horizontal movement ability and maybe a jump, jump. Um, with that set, uh, I can simply create a prefab out of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna put myself here. My new character, I create a prefab. I select the level manager, select my new character and put it into um, the playable character array. I can remove that one. And then if I go into my level and press play, as you can see um, here, I have a moving platform that can jump and double jump and from there uh, all I need or could do would be to uh, uh, select my prefab again and add more abilities uh, so for example the ability to uh, uh, crouch or the ability to dive and so on and so on uh, of course I could create my own abilities uh, add some health to it maybe a health bar stuff like that but uh, as you can see there are different ways to create characters in the Corgi engine uh, all of them are, are good as long as they as they work for you um, and uh, don't hesitate to check the documentation uh, the link is in the description below uh, if you want to know more I hope you liked it and uh, talk to you next time bye